master seller begins with persuasion, but there's a difference between persuasion and manipulation. So how do we tell one versus the other? Dave Lacani grew up under the control of an obscure religious cult. But when Dave broke away, he discovered the difference between manipulation and persuasion and used that knowledge to help businesses find new customers. Now, his latest book is called Persuasion, The Art of Getting What You Want. Okay, persuasion, manipulation, what's the difference? Donnie, there's a very simple difference. It comes down to one word. That word is intent. If your intent is to harm people, if it's to get whatever you want, regardless of the outcome of the other person, if it's to mislead people, to uh, cause them to do things that they don't want to do, that's manipulation. It's always discovered. It's always negative. And you should never do it if you're a salesperson. But uh, let me give you a different semantic on manipulation. It's just, uh, no, I don't manip I'm just moving them to where I want to get them. Yeah. And that's the idea of persuasion. My, my definition of persuasion is simply this. It's getting people to come to their mo own most logical conclusion, which happens to be one you share. And that idea is very good because people desire to get the information they need in a way that they can accept it. Okay, you say there are four tools to persuasion. Storytelling, be seen to sell, transfer of power and credibility, and develop persuasive persona. That's right. Storytelling is our oldest form of communication. From the time we were very young, we've been taught through stories. From the time we move into church or synagogue, we move in and we're taught through stories. School is stories. People respond to stories instantaneously. It's also a subliminal selling technique because people don't understand that you're attempting to persuade them. They're simply listening to a dialogue that makes them comfortable. Okay, and as far as transfer of power and credibility? Transfer of power, power and credibility is intensely important. If I come onto your show and, because someone else told you about me, I'm much more likely to have a spot than I am if I just call you every day and hope that you're going to come on. Also, transfer of power and credibility works because people instantly see you as a much more recognizable and trusted resource when somebody they trust introduces and you. And you also say develop persuasive persona as far as even things like using your voice? different. Everything is important because people make decisions about you before you even open your mouth. They make a decision about who you are, whether you can be trusted, if you're safe. Okay, and, okay so let's explore this whole manipulation persuasion. And Kendra, how do you know when someone might be manipulating you? You know, you just feel bad. You know, when, when you feel manipulated, it just makes you kind of feel yucky inside. But when you're being persuaded, it's like, oh, I can kind of see the world through their eyes, through their vision. And there's a big difference there. You don't want to feel like you're being pushed into something that you're not comfortable with. But Michael, how do I sell somebody something let's say I'm, somebody's not buying mm -hmm. okay I see it we're gonna get into the next section we're gonna get into body language mm -hmm. they're not buying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my persuasion is not working I'm not persuading them I gotta manipulate them a little bit I gotta, I gotta get them over this a little yeah. bit no um, if they're absolutely not gonna buy then leave them be go somewhere else but the idea behind persuasion, it seems, is to give the buyer an opportunity to express their values through what they buy. That's how we all live. Every, with our clothes, everything about us is an opportunity for expression of what we value. Okay, I want to go through an exercise, David. I want the difference between manipulation and persuasion. I go into you in a meeting and I say, you're not a particularly attractive woman, but I say, <laughs> laughing as I'm looking at you, I say, <laughs> I'm you, not really, you know, it's great to see you, you look, you look beautiful today. Is that persuasion or is that manipulation? It's actually neither. It may just be an observation, but it does definitely present you in a better light. It makes someone feel better about you and feeling better often leads to people making better decisions about what you're selling. Okay, another exercise. Another exercise. Yeah, go through. Mm -hmm. You really need this product. I'm telling you, you need it. Persuasion or manipulation? Shouting is never selling, so that's more manipulation trying to get them to do something that they may not be inclined to do, inducing pressure, hard, sa uh, hard sales tactics, those kind of things, never feels good and they don't work as well. That's old school selling, no longer I want to flip it back to me. Let's say you want to come on, you want to be a regular contributor in the show. Show me what a manipulative selling technique would be, which is not as effective versus a yeah. persuasive one. Let's start with the manipulative. So a manipulative technique would be to say, Donnie, I've got your home address. I'm sending paparazzi to your house every day unless you put me on the show. That's sort of manipulative. Well, that's that's, manipulative. that's, that's, that's exploitative. That's, that's, <laughs> but, that's, I mean, but some people do that when you think about the products that they sell you know they, they usually I remember my mother was going to buy fire alarms one time that company came by and they said listen uh, if you don't want your children to burn to death in the house you should buy these fire alarms that's highly manipulative I mean what mother doesn't say well, of course I don't want my my children to burn to death now something more persuasive a way to get you in what if I do this Donnie what if I go around to everybody you know I take my tiny little pocket camera and I and I go to people that you know and I say listen tell Donnie how great I am and then I get Donald Trump and I get Guy Kawasaki I get everybody to come in and, and give you this and I send you a little reel all of them are saying hey Donnie it's your friend you should get Dave on the show he's the greatest guy ever by the way this works perfectly to capture testimonials this is another transfer of power and credibility yet no salespeople use this it's the simplest thing you can do Lisa yes. selling happens every day in life yeah. how do you take your techniques of selling which is on the air to everything from 
meeting a guy to getting a friend to do something, to mm -hmm. getting your, your mother to stop calling you so much or whatever it is. How do you bring <laughs> selling into everyday life? Well, I think the basic laws of selling do apply to every day. The basic laws of selling are, number one, be yourself. Okay, that's going to always be your best deal. Number two, always be honest. That's going to be your best shot. Um, number three, approach everyone as an equal and as a friend. Number four, think about what that other person wants and make sure that it's a good thing for them. I mean, those are the four well, basic. Let's, let's just, let's, 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 without being glib here, let's yeah. say you there's a guy you meet and you'd like to go out on a date with that guy. Right. What do you do to sell yourself? She doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> okay. What, what do you, what is the art, because I think this is what's the, one of the most important things about the show, we are selling product, everything we do every day in life. Well, I think, number one, you've got to look interested. I think, you know, a lot of times you hold back, you're right. back here, you just open up, look at that person, your body language should be open, look interested, be interested, and the minute they feel like you're truly interested in them, they're going to be interested now, in you. Now, when two thugs, you, you yeah. see a, you, a girl, you want to sell yourself, you want her to go out with you, yeah. is the first thing... You say, is it, you know, do you know about them? Is it, is it, do you compliment them? Do you say, how do you like me so far? I mean, what, what do you do? It's What's to get creative to quickly. It's to get creative and it's also to present yourself in a way that's non-threatening and interesting because people like connecting with interesting people and, and interested people. So be interested, be more interested in them than you are interested in telling about yourself. So no different than if you were going to sell the widget. Very that's interesting. Right. Okay, here are the playbook plays. First off, your intent is what separates manipulation and persuasion. And people will always be able to feel your intent. Inducing pressure on your customer backfires in the end. Never be the high-pressure person. Find your moments to just be quiet. Get the other guy talking first. More big ideas straight ahead. Like it or not, your bigger life depends on other people. So can you actually read what they're telling you? 93% of what we communicate with others, Donnie, is nonverbal. See Donnie in the QVC pressure cooker as he puts his skills to the test. For a lesson in selling he'll never forget at bigidea.cnbc.com.